Do you ever find yourself bookmarking way too many browser tabs? Notion can save you from this headache and help you neatly keep track of the content you want to read, watch, or listen to, and store what you've already consumed. This video will show you how to create your own dynamic reading list with Notion and use our very helpful web clipper to instantly add content that you wish to keep for later to your list. Here's what our final list will look like. All the information you need stored in one table, from me to type in status to publishers and summaries. Let's start with a workspace and add a new page to it by clicking on table under the database section. Give your new table a name and add an icon and cover if you wish. Let's say I want to save the gastropod podcast for later. I'll type its name in the first column here where it says name. If you hover your cursor over your entry, you'll see the option of opening your page. Click on it to see this page view where you can store all the information associated with your entry. A way to add structured and dynamic information is through properties. Properties are pieces of information about each entry in the table, and they can come in many forms like text, numbers, dates, and people. Properties can be found at the top of every page in any database you create with Notion. Here, we have two default properties, files and tags. Let's delete both default properties and add our own. Click on Add a Property, give your property a name, hover your cursor under Property Type to access the dropdown, and pick the property you want to add. In this case, I want to be able to determine the type of media my new entry is, and for this, I'll use the single select property. Great! My property is now created. Now, I'm going to type out every kind of media I plan on adding to my reading list. For example, I'll write podcast followed by enter. Click here again, write another media type, and press enter. And so on and so forth. Good stuff! Every time I add a new entry to my table, I'll be able to select the type of media it is by clicking on the dropdown. Let's add another three single select properties to determine the reading status, score, and publisher. Here they are! Now you can click next to every property and make a selection in the dropdown you created for every one of them. Another thing you can add is a property called Release Date and select the Date property. Now, you can add a date by clicking on the empty space next to your property and selecting it from the calendar that pops up. I'll add a URL property, which I will use to paste the link of my resource. And finally, a text property called Summary, where I can add a short sentence rehashing what I read. All seven of my properties are created. I can use the six-dot icon next to each of them to change their order of appearance. Click out of the page to go back to your table, and there! Every property has its own column, and all your information is visible in one glance. Every time you want to add another content piece to your table, just click on the blue New button at the top right of the table. Fill out the new page that pops up, click out of the page, and your new entry is added. This is what a full reading list could look like. Logically, there are no scores or summaries associated to the things I haven't read yet. There's no need to fill out every property. You can also leave them blank. Now, let's go to our web browser. Say you stumble across an article that sounds interesting, but don't have time to read it right this second. So let's put it in our reading list. Of course, you can copy the link, manually create a new page in your table, type the name of the article, and paste the URL into it. But you can also save all these steps with Notion's Web Clipper. Click on the Notion icon, edit the name of the content piece if you want, select the workspace where your reading list is, then use the Add To section to choose where you want to clip this article to. If it doesn't appear in this list, just search for it. Save the page, and you'll see your new entry at the bottom of your table. Then you can add all the information you want. The Web Clipper doesn't just grab the page URL, it also collects all the text and images from the web page too. That way, you can catch up on all these articles you wanted to read right inside Notion, without all the distractions from reading in your browser. With a content-heavy table like this one, it's helpful to know how to filter your information. At the top of your table, click on Filter, then Add a Filter, and here you can say, Status is ready to start if all you want to see is the content pieces you haven't read, watched, or listened to yet. If you want to see the things you finished, 
Change your filter to status is finished. And remove your filter whenever you want by clicking on the three dots next to it and remove. And we're done. We hope this video will help you keep track of all the great content out there in a neat and fun way. Notion is your second brain, a place to store all the interesting books, articles, and podcasts you stumble across throughout the day. Happy reading! Thank you.